You are asking me to do something against my oath, and I will not break my oath. And welcome back to Square Off. That was Arizona House Speaker Rusty Bowers telling the January 6th committee why he rebuffed Trump White House attempts to persuade Bowers to help overturn Arizona's 2020 vote. Our next guest, Republican candidate for Governor Matt Salmon, has known Rusty Bowers for years. Right now, Salmon is in a three-way race with former TV news anchor Carrie Lake and businesswoman Karen Taylor Robeson for the Republican nomination for governor. Salmon is a former congressman who lost a close race for governor 20 years ago. Matt Salmon, welcome to Square Off. Thanks, Brad. Good to be here. Let's talk about the Roe versus Wade ruling, the Supreme Court striking it down. As governor, how would you want to see that law, abortion, anti-abortion law, be enforced? We actually have two options. One, uh, the more restrictive option is uh, a law that's been on the books since statehood, which virtually says uh, there shall be no abortions except to save the life of the mother. The other one is one that just got passed this year that uh, basically was the same as the Missouri law uh, that said that uh, uh, no abortions after 12 weeks. I, I would think it was 15 weeks. 15, 15 weeks, yeah, yeah excuse sure. me, 15 weeks. Uh, and I would opt for the one that saves the most lives, uh, most unborn babies' lives, and that would be the one that's on the books. Uh, and I, I came into the Republican Party when I was 18 years old, and the only thing I knew about the Republican Party was that they were pro-life. I didn't know a lot of things about the platform. That's what got me into the Republican Party, and that's been an important part of my life for a long, long time. So when you say the one that saves the most lives, it's the one that is, allows no exceptions. That excel, it allows exceptions for, for saving the life of the mother. Saving the mother. And that it. is the only exception you would allow? Rape, incest? That's the law that's on the books, and that's the one that I would chiefly defend, yes. As governor, would you want to see the legislature pass a bill that allowed exceptions for cases of rape or incest? I would like to see it stay as is. As is, that's yes, it. All right. That's a pretty clear answer. Yes, sir. Let's go on to Rusty Bowers. You've yes, been a sir. friend of his for many years. So when I first became a state senator in 1990, uh, I, uh, I got to know Rusty a little bit. And then in 92, he actually got elected to the House, uh, and he was my seatmate. And so I've known Rusty, gosh, uh, 30 years. And I've always known him to be a man of impeccable integrity and uh, always, always has done what he believes is right. And so when you heard his testimony, do you support what he said? Y yes, I, I support Rusty. I believe that Rusty uh, will always act based on what he believes. Now, this guy was uh, summoned uh, to go to that. He was subpoenaed to go to that uh, hearing. He had no options uh, because uh, if, if you reject that, you're held in contempt. And he was sworn under oath. And so I have no doubt that what Rusty said was what he believed 100%. I don't think Rusty would perjure himself if you put, to, put a gun to his head. So what he said was the Trump White House put incredible pressure on him. That's what he said. To help them overturn the results of the election. What's your response to that? How did that change your view of Donald Trump? Well, my, my view of, of, of uh, Donald Trump has been that uh, many of the policies that he enacted, the Supreme Court that he put in place, which is now overturned Roe versus Wade, are so much in line with uh, uh, the policies and the beliefs that I've hold, held dear for so many times. I voted for him uh, as president uh, both times, and uh, uh, I believe he would have been a far better president than Joe Biden. But when it comes to Rusty's testimony, I've never questioned Rusty's integrity. I believe that Rusty said everything according to how he believed things happened. Rusty said Joe Biden won the election. And that, did that's you, right. And that, and that's, did that, Joe Biden win the election? What, that's what Rusty, well, he's the president of the United States. He is in the office. I've heard you give that answer. And, it's, and, it's and a, you know what? Why can't, why can't we get a yes or no? Graham, did Joe Biden Graham, win the election? One of the, one of the things that, that I keep hearing from the media is that we need to get beyond the last election and we need to get on with our lives and on into the future because Arizona has some really pressing issues, whether it's dealing with the border, whether it's dealing with uh, the schools, uh, whether it's dealing with our economy. And, and yet, one of the first questions you always get asked when you come to the media is, what about the last election? I think it's time we move on. But 
here you are saying you admire what Rusty Bowers did. I do did. admire him. He's doing that for a reason That's because right. we're trying to get to the bottom. Right. Congress is trying to get to right. the bottom of what happened right. and what the Trump White House tried to do to overturn our election. Right. Agree? So, you, yes, exactly. It, isn't that and, and, and in my heart, in my heart, the uh, day I woke up after the election, I had a lot of questions, a lot of concerns. And then we started looking at evidence and you have to weigh evidence based on what's admissible in court. And so far, all of the evidence and all of the lawsuits have uh, refuted the idea that Biden didn't win the election. And so you, you have to follow the law. And that's what the law is. And that's where I'm at. I, I follow the law. So Biden won the election. Well, that's what you just said. I, I really am baffled. I, I get, I understand this politically. I don't understand this when you listen to somebody like Rusty Bowers, who spoke from his heart about the Constitution, the need to stand up for it. He heard nothing. He heard Rudy, Rudy Giuliani say, "What was it? Uh, no evidence. Lots of theories." Right. Right. That's what he said. I and know. I, I, I know you. 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 You hold our democracy dear. Well, Is that I fair hold, statement. Actually. Actually, yes. But even more, and our even, even more important, I hold a republic dear, because that's what we have. It's not a straight democracy. It's a republic, and I hold it dear. Yes, I do. And so why can't, if the country cannot agree on who won the election, where does that leave us? You know what, Graham? He is functioning. He is the president of the United States. He is. He is in the White House, and that's what's happening now. Uh, he is the one that is calling the shots from the Oval Office. And that's the way this country's operating. That's the way I'm operating. Andy Biggs is another good friend of yours. He's he endorsed you a dear year friend. ago, I think, when your campaign started. A dear friend. Uh, last week, uh, we learned that Andy Biggs, according to Mark Meadows, chief of uh, aid, sought a presidential pardon. Well, Andy has refuted that. He? And, and, and Andy has refuted that time and time again. And he's another guy, as I've just said. I've known Rusty Bowers for many, many years. I've known Andy even longer. And I believe Andy to be very, very truthful. Very truthful. Yes, sir. The aide said that under oath. Andy Biggs has never gone under oath right. to say anything. But I, I, I mean, I know you Andy You don't Biggs. ask for a pardon unless you think you may have done something Andy wrong. Andy says he didn't ask for a pardon. That's what he said publicly. And that's what he said time and time again. And right now, until I see something that proves otherwise, that proves otherwise, not just something somebody said, I believe Andy Biggs. He asked, and uh, Rusty Bowers said under oath that Andy Biggs asked him to essentially violate his oath and help out with overturning the election. That's the way that you portray it. The way that I portray it is that Andy believed in this theory, I guess, that the Trump lawyers had come forth to him. I don't believe Andy would ever, ever try to subvert the Constitution in any, any way, shape, or form. He's a decent man, just like Rusty Bowers is, and he follows what he believes is right. Let's move on to discussing uh, the governor's it. race. Uh, a lot of political insiders are questioning your path uh, to victory. Polls have shown you're, you've been in a solid third. Right. Um, and, you know, I would agree that polls can be kind of rough, uh, rough estimates. Uh, has anyone from Ka Karen Taylor Robeson's campaign approached you about getting out? I've had probably lots and lots of folks uh, that support her that have uh, uh, given me their opinions, yes. What kind of opinions are they? That you should get out. Your response? My response is uh, that's not the way that elections work. I'm going to do every, I, I see a pathway to victory. If I didn't, I wouldn't be in the race. Uh, how concerned are you about the possibility that Carrie Lake could win the primary? You comfortable with that? Not at all. Why not? Why not? Because I think that if... Uh, Carrie Lake were elected, I, I think she would lose in the general, for one thing. I don't think that she would end up serving. And I just recently saw a poll uh, by one of the prominent pollsters in town a couple of days ago that said just that. In a general election, both Karen Taylor Robeson and I would beat Katie Hobbs. And this poll uh, showed that uh, Carrie Lake would lose. And so I'm very, very concerned that if she's our nominee, she'll lose. Uh, you were... Uh, how did you feel about her reaction to what Rusty Bowers said? I believe she called him uh, a backstabber. She said that he stabbed Arizona in the back, and I couldn't disagree more. A person that operates based on their conscience and their beliefs should be celebrated, not castigated. 
So what is the path? Karen Taylor Robeson can spend, she has a blank check. Right. Right now. Right. To spend as much as she wants. Do, right. you, have, do you have a blank check? Oh, no, sir. No, sir. I do sir. not have a blank check. And if money buys elections, then she'll win hands down. But I got to believe that the voters out there are going to look at a whole host of things. And they're going to look. I, I've been working on the grassroots level, working my heart out. I've covered every square inch of Arizona. And I've talked to so many people. I've given over 400 speeches. And I believe at the end of the day that the voters are going to look at all of the facts. And I believe when they do, I'm going to be victorious. And I don't believe in Arizona you can just buy an election. I don't. All right. Something I want to ask you about for a while now and haven't had the opportunity uh, regards Hacienda Healthcare. Yes, sir. You were and your wife were both involved in that very closely for 25 right. years. It seemed like right. you, were, you were patrons. Right. And, uh, this was a mission for you. Yes. Uh, something I believed in very much. And then things got really bad. And it really broke my heart. It broke. And, and you know, a, a nurse there raped a patient, yeah. impregnated a patient. Yeah. And at the same time, you had the CEO who was accused of basically defrauding right. Arizona right. of millions of dollars. Right. Were you aware of any of that? Oh, and, not and ahead of time. No, I was. Any hints I, that I, things I, were I, going I, bad? I felt like as much of a victim as anybody out there. It, it broke my heart. I've, I've been involved with the developmentally disabled my whole life. Uh, the Mark Center out in uh, Mesa, uh, which uh, helps developmentally disabled. I was involved with that clear back in my 20s. And I've always just had a special place in my heart for doing uh, things for this developmentally disabled. And um, the Hacienda Healthcare was a place that I really believed in. And when those things unfolded and, and the things, uh, the accusations were made about the CEO, it, it, it literally broke my heart. It really made me sad. And um, my hope, heart goes out to the people that were hurt. There were a lot of employees and a lot of people that still support the developmentally disabled, which we should. I mean, there need to be good avenues for helping folks uh, in, in, in that situation and families in that situation. And I continue to have a strong heart uh, for the developmentally disabled and their families. And hopefully uh, uh, the folks, they're the good, good people at Hacienda Healthcare will uh, be able to turn it into a far better organization from what I've heard over the last couple of years since all the problems uh, were encountered, they have. But um, my hope, Arizona deserves to have every organization operate on the up and up, especially those that take care of the, the vulnerable among us. Matt Salmon, thanks very much for joining us. Best of luck. You're welcome. Thanks a lot, Brad.